Tuesday night, I forgot. <laughs> All right. So good morning and welcome to the Rebirth Fitness All Levels class. I am, I was going to say, I am your host. <laughs> I am your host. Yeah, that's funny. I'm actually going to flip this mat here. So I'm excited for teaching you something new today. We are going to learn about the bandhas. Woohoo! So bandha in Sanskrit means lock or um, basically like a um, uh, tightening or a um, uh, the best phrase, the best, best translation is really lock. It's like um, we will contract and focus awareness on certain areas of the body and contracting muscles. And uh, I'll describe each one for you so that we can hold energy in a certain place, um, move it, redirect it um, to go into the uh, Shashumna Nadi, the energy channel. Uh, the central main energy channel uh, and run up through the chakras to bring more energy, um, release blockages, and um, move and intensify and redirect energy. So those are the purposes of the locks or bandhas. And they relate to different chakras. So the first one we'll practice is called Mula Bandha. And mula bandha is the root lock. Mula means root. So it's associated with the uh, root chakra. And the best way I can describe this is to literally contract the perineum or doing like a Kegel exercise where you contract release and or stopping yourself from urinating, basically. Those are the muscles that are contracting. And you're pulling upwards. And what you can do is bring your um, right hand, I'll mirror you, to the base of your spine by your tailbone behind you. And you can place your um, left hand in the front and just focus your awareness on your tailbone. And you can close your eyes and just contract and activate the mula bandha or the root lock. So by pulling, um, the contracting the perineum, pulling in and up like you're stopping yourself from urinating or doing a Kegel exercise. Just feel contract and relax, contract and relax. And notice when you do that, what happens when your hand is on your tailbone? Do you feel your tailbone moving away from your hand slightly? Do you feel the tightening of maybe like some of the lower abdomen uh, area of the uh, transverse or deeper abdominals? Just be aware of what's going on. You can even bring both hands to the tailbone. So you should kind of feel it moving slightly forward and away from you because as you contract those muscles, everything gets tighter and pulled in and up. Feel that? Um, so let's, uh, let's just practice holding that. So take a deep breath in and exhaling and contract and hold pulling and contracting in and up with the perineum, perineum in the muscles and holding. And noticing, use your mind to bring awareness to your root. You can breathe naturally and normally. And then whenever you need to relax, you can let go. Go ahead and um, release and relax. So that was our Mula Bandha. Um, that's a really nice um, addition to help you in your um, inversions and your arm balances because you want to really pull everything in and up. 
And uh, so is this next banda, which is Uddiyana banda. So let's practice that. We're going to um, think of pulling the belly button in towards your spine, which I say like a broken record in classes, but also feel the abdomen like you're feeling the diaphragm pull in and up underneath your rib cage. So I want you to just have that as a visualization. You're going to sit up tall. You can press your hands on your legs, on your knees and inner thighs to help you um, elevate your body taller. And you're going to exhale all the air out. You can even breathe out of your mouth to exhale all that air out, completely um, pressing the lungs flat and letting everything out. And then with the exhale, you're going to contract and pull belly in and up, pull diaphragm in and under and up underneath your ribs and hold for as long as you can. Squeeze. And then slowly releasing, inhaling as you breathe in, feel the belly inflate, and rise. So how was that one? That one can be pretty intense and pretty powerful. I know I feel that one a lot um, it, and it's very much um, aiding in digestion. This one is connected to your solar plexus um, chakra. So let's try that one again, and then we'll move up to the throat. So exhale all your air out. <sighs> Press strong into your knees, and then pull the belly button in and up, and hold. Relax shoulders down and back, down away from ears, and squeeze them back. Pulling belly in and up, diaphragm under the ribs, lifting, feel lifted. And release, take a deep breath in and breathe. And now the third one is the Jalandhara Banda, which is the throat lock. And that is obviously connected to the throat chakra. So this one um, is really great for assisting in the thyroid function. Um, it's also involved in all areas of um, the, sh the throat chakra. The Uddiyana Banda helps to bring energy up through the rest of the chakras, and the throat lock will help um, not put out that digestive fire by not allowing um, water or anything from the throat, like saliva, anything like that, to drop down into the digestive system. So the way you do the throat lock is um, a little bit opposite. This time you're going to um, take a deep breath in and lift the shoulders slightly up and back as you bring your chin down toward your chest and squeeze in the chin to the chest and into the throat. Squeezing in. and release and breathe. So again, that really stimulates um, thyroid and you're pushing and pressing chin into chest and throat. When the shoulders elevate and lift, they help squeeze in deeper, and you're, but you're also pulling them back. So let's try that one again. Take a deep breath in and lift shoulders up and back, squeeze chin to chest, and squeeze in into the throat. And releasing, nice. So now there's a lock that um, it, we are able to well, there's two more that I want to sh show you um, during class because I know that this is like a lot to uh, cover. <laughs> so um, basically, to um, be able to 
do all three of the of the locks that we just did together um, to engage the Mula Banda, the Uddiyana Banda, and the Jalandhara Banda. It's called the Maha Banda. So the Maha Banda is actually engaging and contracting all three of those main bandhas at the same time. So this one can be a little challenging. Sometimes it's easy to do Mula Banda and Uddiyana Banda together and or Uddiyana Banda and Jalandhara Abanda together, but to do all three is a bit of a challenge. So we're going to practice doing our, and I know this is a little different from our normal class, but I was really excited to teach the bandas um, this week in teacher training. So um, it's nice to feel your body, and this is also a meditation. So let's first try the Mula and Uddiyana Banda together. So contracting and pulling in perineum and then exhaling all the air out and pulling belly button in and up, diaphragm under the ribs, pressing down on the knees. And release. So we're able to do it with both. And now um, we'll try the Jalanhara and the Uddiyana Bandha. So exhaling all the air out, pulling the belly in and up, and then tuck the chin into the throat, pull the shoulders back, and you can uh, decide. You can lift the shoulders up to squeeze more into the throat, or you can pull them down and back to pull belly button in and up. But as long as you have them back, you're able to engage both locks. And release. All right, we're going to do it. We're going to go for all three. So here we go. We're contracting and pulling in the muscles of the perineum. We're exhaling the air out and pulling in belly button in towards your spine. And then we're pulling shoulders down and back and squeezing into the throat lock. And another way to do it, um, you can still hold Uddiyana Banda in while inhaling and exhaling. So let's actually take a deep breath in. As we release all the Bandhas, take a deep breath in and then squeeze into the throat. Pull belly bend in and up and engage the Mula Banda, the perineum. Squeeze all three at the same time. Focus, breathe, concentrate and release. Awesome, everyone. Ooh, that was beautiful just to um, try it even for the first time and just see how you feel and notice your body, notice your experience. All right, so let's just do a, a few warm ups and then I'm gonna show you the um, foot and hand lock in class during um, our poses. So take a deep breath in, reach arms up overhead, look at the thumbs. Exhale, twist, look over right shoulder. Press right palm at the ground by the base of your spine. Inhale, lengthen, lifting crown of head towards the sky. Exhale, twist. Stay here, just turn your head over left shoulder. Release, inhale, come up. Exhale, twist over left side. Stay here, just turn head over right shoulder. Release, inhale, arms up. Interlace palms, press to the sky. Look up, arching back, and then exhale, round and curl. Inhale, arching back up. Release right arm to the sky, lengthen through left side body. Roll open left shoulder. Inhale, come back up, lengthen. Exhale, left arm down, reaching through right side body. Roll open right shoulder. Inhale, coming back up. Now I want you to release your feet and have both feet come to your left side. And your knees are slightly to the right. So your arms are up. You're going to twist over your um, right side. Look over your right shoulder. 
And if you would like to go a little further and challenge yourself in this twist, you can bring the bottom foot, your right foot, up into a half lotus. You can also place the back of your left hand on the outside of your right thigh. Press strong into the ground, lengthen the spine. Look up, look over, right shoulder. And release, coming back to center and then shifting knees over to the left, feet to the right. Right hand on the outside of the left thigh, near the knee, press into the ground with your left hand as you lengthen spine, look over left shoulder, breathe. Now, if you um, were able to go into your, um, your extra um, pose here, you can um, bring your left foot up into half lotus. This is a little more intermediate um, uh, posture. It's called Bharad Vajasana 1, and then this is Bharad Vajasana 2, part 2, level 2. We bring the foot into half lotus, and we twist a little deeper. Eventually, this back arm, the left arm wants to, the true uh, part two, level two, is to grab the toe behind your back and um, hold on to that foot as you twist. Dropping that left knee to the ground, lengthening spine. Look forward, release. All right, so um, I just faced you, but you would be on your mat here, rolling forward into a tabletop position. Tucking toes, arching back, look up. Exhale, round and curl. Inhale, arching, look up. Exhale, round and curl. And do a few at your own pace with your own free breath timing. Going through our cat cow. And now um, coming to neutral spine in tabletop. So your shoulders are over the wrists and hips over the knees. We're practicing Hasta Banda. It's a hand lock. So we spread the fingers wide. The hands are aligned under shoulders. And we press into the finger pads, into the, the very last joint end of our finger, the finger, the tips of the fingers of the pads are pressing into the ground. Notice what that feels like. Now, feel like you're clawing the ground, but don't allow the fingers to lift. So a little less claw and press more into the finger pads. Now, press into where the finger joint meets the palm. And keep pressing into the finger pads. Now press into the heel of the hand and still keep pressing into where the joint meets the hand, the finger meets the hand, and the finger pads, the tips of the fingers. So you're pressing all three points evenly, all your fingers. And notice if the hand slightly lifts up and if you feel more grounded through your hands, through your palms, this is a hand lock, hasta banda. And it's almost like your hands become little suction cups. And you don't want to do it too much to where you actually lift off the ground because that can be tough on your joints. It's a very subtle movement. Let's try it in our downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, press back, downward dog. And first, go ahead and pedal out your feet, bending and straightening one knee at a time, pressing the opposite heel into the ground. You can even shift your hips side to side. Shifting here, breathing. And coming back to center. So in down dog, we want to push into the finger pads. And notice if you're clawing the mat by lifting up the fingers, don't lift off the middle part of the fingers. Still keep them down, but you're pressing more into the finger pads and press into where the finger joint meets the hand. 
and then press into the heel of the hand and notice when you press on all three points and all 10 finger pad tips that you actually create that little bit of a suction cup and you feel more grounded through the hands. Shift your weight back. This is your Hasta Banda. Notice it. Close your eyes and feel it. Feel the energy grounding you in through your hands into the earth. Breathe. Find stillness in your downward dog. Notice the strength building in the hands. Taking pressure off the wrists and then slowly begin to walk your feet all the way up to the top of the mat. And hanging heavy here, grab opposite elbows and just let your body do whatever it wants. Do you wanna just hang here in stillness? Shifting towards the balls of the feet. Do you want to shift forward and back or rock side to side? Now release your arms, tuck your chin to your throat, maybe even practice your Jalandhara Banda, your throat lock. Well, all the way up to standing as you roll the shoulders down and back, standing tall and strong in your mountain pose. Feel the foundation of your feet. So I'm going to face you just so you can see me. But I want you to feel grounded through your feet. So um, we'll, we'll do this both ways. We'll do the um, feet separate, and then we'll bring feet together and let you feel the uh, foot lock, the pada banda. So I want you to um, lift the toes, lift the toes all the way off the ground, all 10 toes lifted. And with your feet hip width and with your toes lifted, close your eyes. Notice your foot, the inner arch of your foot feels lifted. Notice your ankle engaging and lifting. And now drop the toes down. Do you notice the ankle release and relax and the inner arch of the foot release and relax? Pay attention when we do it again and bring that awareness back to those areas. So here we go. Lift all 10 toes up to the sky and notice what changes in the foot. Do you feel the ankle lifted, the inner arch lifted? Do you feel the quads start to engage the front of your thighs, your groin muscles? And now, as you keep that sensation of the lift through the inner arch and the ankles, keep that sensation engaging the quads, lifting upward, just lower the toes to the ground, spreading them evenly. But still lifting the groin, the inner arches of the foot, the ankle, Internally rotate the upper thigh bones and feel grounded through the feet as the weight evenly distributed through all four corners of your feet. Feel it. Bring your awareness to it. Feel like you're so strong in your standing, balanced, grounded. No one can move you. Even if someone came up and tried to push you over, they wouldn't be able to. And now open your eyes, shift into your right foot, press your palms together. We'll open your left knee. Come into your version of tree, your balance posture, your variation, keeping in mind that same principle of grounding and foot lock with the right foot now. So you can do any version of your tree. You can extend the arms up can open, lengthen, breathe. Notice the inner arch lifting, the ankle lifting. And slowly coming back down, release. 
Now let's try bringing the feet all the way together before we go to the other side. So feet all the way together. This one's a little more tricky to shift in so that you're, when you go, go into tree, because your feet are together, don't allow your hip to bow out when you push your foot in. Don't allow it to push against with the inner thigh, with the hip in, pushing against the foot. So first, both big toes are touching ankles. Internally rotate the upper thigh bones. Lift all 10 toes. Feel the engagement of the quads, the inner thighs. Feel the inner arch of the feet lift. Feel the ankles. Notice if you're a little more wobbly on this one that your feet are together. And then when you're ready, keep that lift of the inner arch and ankles. Keep the contraction of the quads and the groin. Slowly lower as you keep all 10 toes spread. Lower the toes, staying grounded, evenly distributing the weight through all four corners of both feet. And then shifting into your left foot only. Come into your tree pose, grounded, staying aligned with left shoulder over left hip over left ankle. Do the same tree version you did on that first side. Fix your eye gaze forward on the spot you want to stare at. And stay focused, stay grounded, feel lifted. Maybe you want to try engaging your Uddiyana Vanda as well, engaging the core, pulling in and up. Belly bent towards the spine. Move slow motion and release the foot down to the ground, walking it out. Nice job. All right, so we're coming back to the top of the mat and we're going to do our Moon salutation, our nice flowy moon salutation. Inhale, arms up, arch back. Exhale, forward fold. Right foot steps back, drop knee, low lunge. Inhale, arms up, lift chest, push hips forward. Exhale, frame foot, downward dog. Drop down knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, sit up, overhead with arms, press palms, exhale, hands to chest. Inhale, circle arms up, and exhale, palms down and through with chest. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Step right foot forward between hands. Inhale, arms up, lift chest, hips push forward. Exhale, frame foot, step left to meet right, forward fold. Press palms together. Inhale, lift, arch back, lengthen. Exhale, hands to chest. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Left foot steps back, low lunge. Inhale, push ups forward, lift chest. Exhale, frame foot, step back, down dog. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, child's pose. Sit up, circle arms overhead, press palms, exhale to chest. Inhale, circle, exhale, flow down and through, snake motion of spine into cobra. Exhale, down dog, left foot steps forward, drop knee. Inhale, arms up, lift chest. Exhale, frame foot, forward fold. Press palms, lengthen spine, arch up, exhale to chest. This time we'll Combine the, the right and left side without pausing in our prayer hands. So here we go. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Right foot steps back. Low lunge. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, downward dog. Knees, chest, chin to the ground. Inhale, slide through cobra. Exhale, flow back to child's pose. Inhale, circle arms up overhead, press palms, exhale to chest. Inhale, circle, look up. Exhale, flow it down and through, smooth. And downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward, drop left knee. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, frame foot, forward fold. Press palms, inhale upward, all the way up, arch back. And then exhale all the way back down again. 
Step left foot back, low lunge. Inhale, arms up, lift chest. Exhale, downward dog. Knees, chest, and chin slide through cobra. Inhale, exhale, child's pose. Inhale, circle up, look up at hands. Exhale, bring it into your chest, all that energy. Scoop it up, inhale, around you. Exhale, down, inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Left foot steps forward, drop knee. Inhale, arms up, lift chest. Exhale, frame foot, step together, forward fold. Press palms, inhale, lengthen, arch back. Exhale, hands to chest. Beautiful. Ah, nice job, everyone. Let's uh, step out with our left foot to the back of the mat. So I'll mirror you. And keep a nice wide stance about hip, or sorry, hand width apart. When you have your wingspan, you want your feet to be directly underneath. And now we'll pivot the right toes to face the front of the mat. And we'll uh, come into our warrior two, bending into right knee, keeping the shoulder blades squeezing together, looking past right fingertips, nice and low, roll open right knee and upper thigh. Flip right palm, right, reach forward, and then hinge back, exalting. Look down at left leg, reach down the back of your leg as far as you can while keeping to bend deep into right knee. Look up at right hand, lengthen, touch thumb and pointer finger, reach through the side body, and inhale back up. Rest right arm on inner thigh, lengthen through left side body, bicep to ear. You can reach down with right hand to the floor on inside or outside is a little more challenging. You can also use your block. If you don't have a block, you can grab a pillow or a blanket that's folded or anything that can help elevate the floor and prop you up a little more to get a better alignment for more energy flow. And then go ahead and straighten uh, both legs as you fold over your right foot, step your left foot up about a third of the way. Inhale, look out, lengthen and square your hips. So I'm just rotating my, my hips, my pelvis. My left hip, the back one, is moving forward and down like it's shifted. The hip flexor down towards the ground. I'm squeezing both quads, lifting the kneecaps up, and feel my spine lengthen here. My right hip pulls back. Notice the back of my right leg and my IT band stretching. And then I lengthen my spine to bring my chin towards my shin. You can also tuck chin to throat or chest and do your Jalanhara Bandha. See if you can bring forehead to knee and squeeze chin into chest and throat. And shoulders coming up, take a deep breath in and squeeze into that throat lock. Maybe you can also try your Uddiyana Bandha, pulling the belly button in towards the spine and up underneath the, the rib cage and squeezing your Mula Bandha, engaging the perineum. See if you can go into that Maha Bandha, all three engaging. Practice, practicing will help you feel more, learn more. Repetition is the mother of all skill. And release and pressing into your right foot and floating that right leg off the ground. Opening up the hip, walking your right hand in front of your right foot. Again, you can use a block here if you like. Press your palm into the block or press fingers into the ground and ground your foot nice and strong as you roll up your left hand. Half moon pose, half moon, rolling open the chest, stacking the shoulders and the hands. 
You can lift that left leg higher, engaging the outer glute, the glute medius. Maybe eventually turning your eye gaze to the uh, side of the room or looking up towards your left hand. Now square your hip down so your toes are facing the floor and you're dropping that left hip. Reach your left hand in front of, again, maybe like a foot in front of your right big toe. Again, you can use the block. We're doing our revolved half moon. So reaching all the way up to the sky with that right hand, reaching up and lifting the left leg higher, maybe looking up towards your right hand with your eye gaze. Feel strong, grounded and rooted in with your foot lock. And then lower down, forward fold. Inhale, look out, lengthen. Bend your knees, plant your palms, step walk or try a jump back and landing and bent elbows, chaturanga, hover hold. Inhale, push up through uh, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe for five breaths in your down dog. Close your eyes and work on your hand lock, your hasta banda, pressing so strong and firm into the heel of the hand where the fingers also meet the hand you're pressing there and putting pressure into the ends of the fingers, the finger pads and putting so much strength and grounding those hands in that if someone were to come by and try to lift up your hand, it would just flop, the fingers would just grip and flop back down. And they wouldn't be able to lift you off the ground because you're so grounded with those hands. At the bottom of your next exhale, look between your hands. Bend your knees, shift your weight back, and jump to the top of the mat. See how high you can get to your fingers. Inhale, lengthen your spine when your feet land. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, arms out like airplane wings. Reverse the swan dive, arch back. Exhale, hands to chest. And then step out again to your wide legged standing five point star. Pivot left toes to the back of the mat, right toes in 45 degrees. Bend into left knee, warrior two, look past left fingertips. Squeeze shoulder blades together, sink down nice and low. Nice and deep here and breathe. Now flip left palm, inhale, hinge forward. Exhale, exalt back. Look at your um, back leg, your right big toe and pinky toe, reaching your right arm down the back of your leg towards your foot. Bend deeper into left knee, sink lower. And then rotate your eye gaze up to left hand, touching thumb and index finger, lengthening through left side body. Inhale, come back up. Resting left arm on inner thigh, look up at right hand. You can stay here or come into any side angle variation. And breathe, really rolling open that right shoulder. You can look at your right armpit underneath. That is the um, Iyengar version, or you can look at your hand, which is more of the Ashtanga version. And now frame your foot with your hands. Release, straighten both legs. Step your right foot up a little bit closer and turn the toes in more. So they're more in a 30 degree angle. And you have a, a closer space between about third closer than you were. Inhale, look out, lengthen the spine, come up to fingertips, square the hips, left hip pulls back, 
right hip pushes forward and down and keep squeezing those quads, lift the kneecaps up. As you lengthen the spine, you bring your chin to your shin, lengthening the spine. And now squeeze your chin to your chest, into your throat lock. So forehead comes to left knee, squeezing in and breathing. Release, walking the hand, the left hand comes in front of your left foot and we're floating up into our half moon by rotating open right hips and lifting leg, straight leg to the sky, reaching right arm up to stack over left. Maybe eventually turning your eye gaze to the side or up towards right hand, engaging and lifting. Feel the energy flowing through that lifted right leg. And then lowering down right hand, squaring off your hips, dropping that right hip down, flex the ankle. Now the hips are square and aligned. Now reaching up slowly with your left hand to the sky. Look up at left hand as you float right leg higher. Twist deeper, stacking left shoulder on top of right, and breathe. Lift and lengthen. Lift that leg higher. Revolved half moon. Last breath here. And exhale, releasing and letting it go forward fold. Now we, we uh, are most likely at the back of your mat, which is okay. <laughs> So we're inhale, lengthening, look out. Bend knees, plant palms, step walk, or jump back and go through your yoga flow. Ending in a downward facing dog. Feel grounded through the hands, through the feet. Practice your hand lock and closing your eyes. Breathing deeply and slowly. Feel your body. Mm, slowly drop down to your knees and we're coming into a, a seated position here. So we've been working on our um, cow face pose this week. So we'll go ahead and do that posture. If you have a strap or belt, you can um, use it as a prop. Otherwise, no worries. If you don't have one, we'll do a few different variations. So right knee is bent in alignment with your right hip. I'm mirroring you, of course. Left knee is stacked on top and feet are out to the side. Now, aligning your feet, if you notice your left sit bone lift off the ground, use your hands to lift your body and square the hips down with that left hip and sit bone grounding into the floor. So you just drop it down. Now we can uh, use our strap with holding one end with the right arm reaching up and reaching that right hand back towards the shoulder blades in between. Left hand comes behind and grabs the strap, reaches, walking hands closer together. Maybe eventually you don't need the strap and you can touch fingers. Inhale, lift chin and push head back, lengthen spine, growing tall, breathe. This is your cow face pose. You can absolutely stay here. If you want to um, just do a variation, you can lean forward with hands in grip with strap or together. 
You can also release hands out and fold over your legs. Bring forehead down, chin towards knees. Forehead now towards knees, tucking chin into throat, maybe do your Jalantara throat walk. Or you can simply bring the face out past the knees and relax. Feel the release of the left hip and glute. Notice the muscles. Are they feeling a little bit of uncomfortableness? Just breathe into that discomfort, inhaling relief as you exhale. And slowly start to walk your hands up and bring the bottoms of the feet onto the ground as your hands come over to the right side. You're going to prop yourself up, lifting your knees, lifting your sit bones and hips up. Walk your hands behind you as you pivot on your feet all the way over to the other side, grounding down. Now, if you did it correctly, <laughs> Your right knee should be on top now. If not, just bring your right knee on top. <laughs> Feet come out to the side. You can flex the ankles if you have any pain or pressure on your knees. Take your hands on either sides of your hip to square off and drop right hip down. Right hand comes up. You can hold the strap with one end, reaching left arm under, reaching for fingertips to clasp, grasp, lifting chest, lengthening spine. Feeling left tricep stretch as you lift the chin and push your head back, looking forward. Eye gaze straight ahead. Feel the right front shoulder, the deltoid stretching here. And this, just go ahead and uh, repeat whatever you did on the first side. If you stayed here, if you folded forward with the hands gripped or releasing hands and allow your body to melt. Just melt into the pose, wherever you're at. Let go, surrender into it, and just breathe, focus on your breath. Slowly walk your hands back up and releasing your legs all the way out. So you can go down the long ways of your mat, just shake out your legs, let the blood flow, windshield wiper <clears throat> your feet. Now, a really great um, inversion that we can also practice our throat lock. Um, we can also try our Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha as well, is our shoulder stand and plow. So, uh, so you can roll into it by bending your knees and allowing your body to uh, roll forward and back a few times, and then lifting up your hips, supporting your low back with your hands so that you can press into the back and wiggle your elbows closer together. Press into the back to stack your feet over your hips and hips over your shoulders. 
This is your shoulder stand. Feel the hip flexors extending towards your uh, forehead. And here you can lengthen the neck and pull the chin into the throat and squeeze in. So that way you're not suffocating yourself by smooshing your chin into your chest. <laughs> so lengthen the neck, press back of head into the ground and feel chin squeezing into throat for your throat lock. Spread the toes, flower the toes, spreading those toes as your feet come together. You can keep that throat lock position, same with the neck, and slowly start to lower your feet past your head into your plow pose, where you're reaching toes towards the ground past your head. If you're actually able to touch, you can release your hands to the ground, maybe even walk your hands closer, shoulder blades under. Sometimes people press into the floor or interlace the fingers. You can do either one. There's just variations to this posture. But we want to stack the hips over the shoulders as you reach the heels behind you more. Flexing the ankles, throat lock, squeeze. Long, lengthened neck. There's another posture here called ear pressure pose. If you feel comfortable, you can bend your knees and basically block your ears with the insides of your knees. Still, everything else is the same, stacking hips over shoulders. Pressing knees into ears, just blocking out all sounds. You can even stay here for a little meditation. Breathe. Find space and quiet within. And find comfort in the uncomfortable. Slowly start to extend your legs, release your hands to come back to your lower back as you, if you did lift, lift your hands off and slowly start to lower down. You can just kind of guide and be there to support your back if it, it needs it. Roll down one vertebrae at a time. Engage your core, belly in towards the spine and see if you can slowly lower the legs down to the ground. If you need to bend the knees, that's fine too. Lower them all the way to the floor. And coming into our um, restorative fish pose, a nice counter pose after our shoulder stand and plow. So if you do have a block pillow or blanket, just take it between the shoulder blades in at any level. I like to do the mid level here, long ways down the center of the spine in between the shoulders, shoulder blades, sorry. Rolling shoulders down and back opening palms and arms out to the side, dropping head back, opening throat. Feel the chest lift to the sky. Feel the collarbone spread. As you breathe into your heart, opening your heart, expanding love and compassion within you. Opening your throat, speaking your truth with love and compassion, understanding, communication, expression, creativity. If you don't have a block or blanket or pillow, simply prop yourself up with your hands and forearms and elbows on the ground, palms face down under your sit bones, press into the floor and drop your head back. Fish pose. You can point the toes, engage the legs, or simply allow the toes to float off to the side in a more relaxing, restorative. The crown of head barely grazes the floor if you have your arms on the ground. And it's most likely floating if you're in the restorative posture. I'm 
slowly release by lifting head up. And then removing block if you have it or just allowing your arms to straighten, flattening your back to the ground, pull your knees to your chest and rock side to side. Feel your back get a little massage here, rocking side to side. And then bringing the bottoms of the feet together. You can again bring your block um, horizontal under your sacrum and tailbone to support and uh, allow the knees to fall to the side. Bending elbows 90 degrees, palms face up by your head for your reclining bound angle, which is another nice, gentle, restorative pose. And you can again do it without the block or blanket, just allow your knees to fall to the side with your back on the ground. Feel gravity pressing down deeper into the floor as you breathe. Lower your arms uh, to a T posture. So out to the side and straightening elbows. Bring right knee up and over to stack on top of left, feeling a gentle twist through your spine, detoxing your internal organs, squeezing out any toxins, helping you digest. And now extending your right leg. See if you can reach that right foot in a flexed ankle position towards your left hand. Maybe your left hand can hold on to the foot as you extend the bottom leg and scoot onto your left hip a little more, extending that bottom left leg. Bend into your right knee. Use your um, left hand to press the outside of the knee and come into a deeper twist. Pull the knee up high and roll back onto your back. And you can even bend your left um, knee to press the foot and scoot you back to center. So your hips are now aligned again. Flatten back to the floor, pull right knee into chest, squeeze it in nice and tight. And then come back into your uh, bound angle. So if we, uh, obviously if we had the block, we would have need, needed to remove it for this exercise to work. <laughs> so bringing your left knee over to the right now, twisting, left arm is extended. So there's no block under you, your back was flat on the ground and then you bring the knee over to twist. First, feeling this gentle twist. And then start to extend the left knee, reaching the left toes up. Maybe you can grab the foot with your right hand and feel the length and the stretch of the hamstring and the IT band of that left extended leg. Turn your head to, over to the left as you feel the opposing forces reaching in opposite direction, your toes and your fingers. Maybe start to extend that bottom right leg, rolling onto your right hip a little more. And then bending into your left knee, twist a little deeper, using right palm to press down that left knee closer to the floor. As you drop your left shoulder down and Lengthen that left arm all the way through the fingertips. Slowly come back to center. You can bend your right knee, place your right foot on the ground to help press you into the ground and scoot you back to center, keeping the hips square. 
Pull left knee into chest, right leg extends to the floor. Pull both knees in and rock a little side to side. And then circle the knees together clockwise, feeling the sacrum circling on the sacrum. Reverse direction. Grabbing the outsides of your feet, kick up into happy baby. Feel the knees drop down one at a time as you rock side to side. Feel the hip flexors as you pull down the bottoms of the feet. Arms are on the insides of the shins and hands on the outside. Pause here in the middle, flatten the back, pull the tailbone close to the ground. Release the feet, extend the legs up high, and then extend them out and engage every muscle. You can bend your knees if you want and squeeze all muscles simultaneously. Tight, tight, tight. You're squeezing the quads, the abs, the biceps, the triceps. Your facial muscles are squeezing. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> and exhale, release. Releasing and relaxing to the ground. Roll the shoulder blades under. Palms facing up. Allow the toes to fall to the side, the feet to relax. Closing the eyes and tune into your body. So yoga gets us out of our heads and into our bodies. When we tune into our bodies, we can connect to our true self without the thinking mind, without connecting to the frontal cortex of the brain. We connect deeper to our intuition, our creativity, our true source soul energy. So allow your body to release down to the ground as you relax all your muscles. Let go of the thoughts in your mind, relaxing your mind. And breathe fully and deeply relax. Completely present in this moment of time as you allow time to dissipate. Holding perfectly still and finding that space between your thoughts. Just connecting.
start to deepen your breath as you bring awareness back into your body, into the room, noticing your belly rise and fall with each inhale and exhale. Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Circle your wrists and ankles. Maybe turn your head side to side, just moving your head and your neck. Reach your arms overhead for a full body stretch, lengthening your entire spine. And then bend your knees, place your feet on the ground and roll to your side, your right side, pausing here, rest your ear on your right bicep. Just take a moment. Bring your awareness back into your body. Notice how you feel after moving that energy through yoga, through moving your body. We circulate prana. We were able to move it, hold it, lock it, change direction with our locks, our different bandhas we learned, manipulating the energy flow. Now take your uh, palm, your left palm, press into the ground and come all the way up to a seated comfortable cross-leg position with eyes closed, palms face up, being open to receiving all the blessings the universe has to give you, being open-minded to new possibilities, new thoughts, and an ever-so-changing world around us. We can always connect to our true selves. All the answers are all the way, all ready within us. <laughs> So thank you for joining me this morning. I hope you enjoyed the class and learned something new today. And have a beautiful rest of your day being your best self. Take a deep breath in, bring hands overhead, press palms, bring all that energy into your heart for completion. Namaste.